Shalom, my friends, and welcome back to the tea table. I was meditating on Proverbs 29.18 the other day, and it tells us that God's people perish because of lack of knowledge, but blessed are those who follow God's teachings. You know, I spent many years in school, which really includes junior high school, high school, college, and graduate school. In all those years, I did one thing, and that was to acquire knowledge. As a matter of fact, at the end of each year, I was tested to see if I actually retained that knowledge. You know what I'm talking about. We have all been there. The dread of the final exams and the many hours pouring over our notes from the entire year, hoping that the notes we took were the ones that would be on the final exam. Obviously, if you passed, which meant you did retain this knowledge, you are able to advance to the next grade, only to start learning new stuff all over again. We all did this year after year after year, and were promoted to the next highest level of learning. Many of us actually set our course in life based on what we have learned, and many others put their very lives online based on what others have learned. I'll give you an example. When I decided to take a flight from the States to Europe, the pilot could have been the smartest student in the world in English. But if he didn't have any knowledge of flying a jumbo jet, there's no way I'll get on that plane because I'm putting my life on the line. Same with doctors. If I need to have minor surgery, and by the way, if a doctor ever cuts into my skin, it's never minor, it's always major to me. If that doctor is gifted in music but has no knowledge in surgery, I may look up to him, but it won't be from an operating table. You know, we spend a great portion of our lives gaining knowledge, and yet God tells us in Proverbs 29.18, God's people perish because of lack of knowledge. Well, reading this verse forces me to ask the question, what kind of knowledge? Bing tells me, that knowledge is a familiarity with someone or something, which can include facts, information, descriptions, or skills acquired through experience or education. Another definition tells me that knowledge means the things which are true as opposed to opinion. Information which is correct is knowledge, and that knowledge can always be supported by evidence. And yet in Hosea 4.6 we are told, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. Personally speaking, I haven't rejected knowledge. As a matter of fact, I have over 16 years of knowledge. And if anyone is qualified in deserving not to be destroyed, it's me. Unless, of course, my definition of knowledge is different than God's definition of knowledge. As I began to search out what knowledge actually means, I discovered that it's the Hebrew word da'ath, which actually comes from another Hebrew word, yada. And no, I don't mean yada, yada, yada. This word means to know by acquaintance or to comprehend and consider, to discern and have an understanding of, and best of all, to know a person intimately and make oneself known. So what exactly did God say in Proverbs and Hosea? He said, My people are being destroyed or perish because they don't know me. Not only don't they know me, but they have rejected me completely and totally. As I thought about this, it makes sense. God wouldn't tell us we are being destroyed because we didn't gain any knowledge of math or history or any course that they teach in school. We don't lose our salvation because we haven't passed the test in physics. You know, there are many doctors, lawyers, and business people that are very successful, although they have not gained knowledge in dancing or home economics. So what is God telling us when he says, destroyed or perish? Well, back to the Hebrew. It's a word called damam. It means to be dumb or silent. It means to be cut off and cause to cease and be utterly and completely brought to silence and be undone. Well, that got my attention, as I hope it got yours. Not only that, but I've been saving the second part of Hosea 4.6 because it's really scary. And it tells me, because you have ignored 
the law of your God, I also will ignore your children. Wait just a second. What do my children have to do with this? If I did something wrong, take it out on me, not on my kids. That's what I was thinking. But if we look at this closely, it also makes sense. If I reject God and His teachings, what do I spiritually pass on to my children? If I reject and ignore God, what will my children learn from me if not to reject and ignore God also? I mean, look what happened in the school system. They took God out of the schools and now wonder why the schools are in such the state that they are. Well, the same principle will apply in the home. If the children grow up rejecting God, they are also doomed to perish unless the love and mercy and compassion of God intervenes as it has for each one of us who believe. This is why it is said that we have passed from death unto life, from darkness into light. Can you say thank the Lord for that? Since we know now that the Lord wants us to follow His ways and we are not going to perish but have eternal life, the question becomes, what do we do with this knowledge of the Lord? Well, it can be summed up in one scripture, namely Ezekiel 44.23. They are to teach my people the difference between the holy and the common and show them how to distinguish between the clean and the unclean. In other words, show them Jesus, the fulfillment of all. And now I leave you with this. Yevadechecha Adonai veyish madecha. Yeer Adonai panavelecha vihu necha. Yesa Adonai panavelecha veyasemlecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance, his attention on you, and give to you his peace. God bless my friends, and we will see you again next week at the tea table.